What's going on, everybody? C4, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're here for our way too early 2024 NFL mock draft. One of my favorite videos to do at the conclusion of a draft is to kind of preview, get hyped about the upcoming college football season. And that's what we're going to do here today in this mock draft. We have Arizona on the clock, back to back picks to start it. There will be a trade immediately. But I think before we do this, let's take a look back to a year ago ish today. I want to look at my way too early 2023 mock draft just to see what we got right, what we got wrong. Don't want to be here for too, too long. Let's just kind of see the picks, how we finished it out, and just give you an idea of like how hard it is to project this far out what the first round is and relish in the ones that we did get right. So I had Bryce Young going first overall. He went first overall. I had Will Anderson going second overall. You know? Pretty much, uh, he was the first non-quarterback taken. That will be a win. C.J. Stroud, second quarterback taken. He was the second quarterback taken. We had Brian Bruzy. He was a first rounder. I had him going at four. At pick five, we went Jackson Smith and Jigba, number one wide receiver for me. And I mean, obviously, some people went back and forth on that throughout the draft process, but ultimately had him going top five. We had Will Levis going to the Giants, our first player. Didn't even make the first round. It gets worse, though. At seven, we went Kayshawn Boutte, wide receiver LSU. He went day three. I don't even know where he ended up going, but that was a miss. Michael Mayer, I had him as the first tight end. That was pretty consensus. He surprisingly slipped to the second round. At pick nine, Anthony Richardson, the third quarterback off the board. It was the third quarterback off the board in real life. For the Commanders, we had them go with Keely Ringo, who fell to my beloved Philadelphia Eagles in the fourth round. Definitely nowhere near a top 10 pick. Jalen Carter at pick 11, so two picks off of where he actually ended up going. Imagine him actually going to Pittsburgh. That would be pretty ridiculous. I had Miles Murphy going to the Philadelphia Eagles. He ended up being a first rounder for the Cincinnati Bengals. Eli Ricks, who was a UDFA for my Eagles. There's the worst one. Almost everybody had him as a first round corner. Kind of stunk up the joint a little bit at Alabama. But there's a player in there. Luckily, my Eagles got him as a UDFA to try to figure that out. But yeah, having him go at 13 was a big time reach joey porter jr at 14 he slipped to the second round for the patriots we have them go bj ojalari he slipped to the second round i had malachi moore to the eagles at 16 this is a player that's actually available in the 2024 draft 17 to the dolphins we had jaquel and roy he went did he go day three he might have, did he, he might have gone in the third round but like he was in that bubble like day three day four i had jordan addison going in the first round obviously he went in the first round in real life to the minnesota vikings at 19, I went Jalen Redmond. Another UD. It's, oh, it's never a way too early mock draft. You don't have guys going in the first round that end up a undrafted free agent. I have Tanner McKee at 20 to the Colts, who is a member of the Philadelphia Eagles. We got him in the fifth round, though, so that was quite the miss. I think most Colt fans are going to be happy they have Anthony Richardson and not Tanner McKee. Noah Sewell to the Ravens. Uh, he fell pretty deep in the draft as well. Jared Patterson, the Bengals, he fell. This was like, he was like a fifth round pick. Justin Flo to 23 of the Texans. He's going to be in this year's draft class. Transferred out. We had Paris Johnson to the Cowboys. Actually, most Cowboy fans would love that pick in their hindsight. We had Peter Skaronsky going at pick 25. And like, as you can see, like some of these guys, well, that's one run. Some of these guys way off the board. He was a 58th player. So you're going to see some of that here in my way to the mock draft. I'm going to grab some guys maybe a little bit earlier than expected. Yeah, I'll pound the table for it. I got Isaiah Foskey at 26. He went in the second round. Bijan Robinson at 27. Trenton Simpson at 28. He ended up going in the second, uh, third round. I think to the Ravens. Green Bay went Marvin Mims. He went second or third round, not first round. All right, Nolan Smith at 30. Called that one on the dot. Went 30 to my Philadelphia Eagles. Byron Young at 31. Brandon Joseph at 32. Neither one of those guys were first round picks. So let's get into our way too early 2024 NFL mock draft. As it stands right now, Arizona, just for the sim, is projected the first and second overall pick. They're not going to Josh Rosen, Kyler Murray. Just, I think, too much money tied up there. So they're going to trade. And I think the one team that could finish with a top five pick that'd be aggressive, they don't care about draft picks to go get their guy, is the Rams. So we're going to have the Rams trade up to first overall where they're going to select Heisman Trophy winner at quarterback Caleb Williams out of USC. 6'1", 215, 4,500 yards, 42 touchdowns to five picks last year as well as 10 rushing touchdowns. I really, really like Drake May. I think it's closer than people think between Drake Bay and Caleb Williams, at least going into this year's college football season. However, I'm not going to be a football hipster and just do something super spicy for the sake of being spicy. It's fair to just take the layup. Caleb Williams, first overall, Rams get their franchise quarterback. Pick two, we have the Arizona Cardinals, and they're going to select Jared Verse, edge rusher from Florida State, was a potential top 10 pick if you declared this year, which a lot of people thought. 
but he returned to Florida State. It's probably best to get two years of big time football under his belt. They're transferring from Albany. But as, you know, 6'4", 250, 17 TFLs, nine sacks last year for Florida State as a small D2 transfer, that's ridiculous production. And you can only be optimistic that he's going to improve upon that. Uh, you know, now at a, you know, a big-time school like Florida, Florida State's not really a big-time school anymore, but hey, who am I talking? Gators are in the, the dirt right now. So we're going to have Arizona. Jonathan Gannon didn't get to go defense in his first draft. They went offensive line this year with two picks in the top five. They'll kind of let him like, all right, get your defensive guy. And I feel like Verse brings a pass rushing help that the Cardinals need. Tampa Bay pick three, get themselves a franchise quarterback in Drake May out of North Carolina, 6'4", 225, 4,300 yards, 38 touchdowns last season, 66% completion percentage, also had seven rushing touchdowns on 700 yards. Really good quarterback. I just hope he doesn't fall into the Sam Howell trap at North Carolina. North Carolina is not like Ohio State, Georgia, Alabama, where when you lose a lot of skill position players, you have bunch of four and five star guys in the pipeline drake may might look a little bit different might not have the same weapons lost josh downs lost green and that's what happened with same how same how was at this point way too early mock draft of 2022 was considered top five top 10 pick at quarterback but he lost a lot of weapons and it just didn't look the same i hope that's not the case for drake may because he is an outstanding quarterback i am firmly a drake may stand and we have him going top five Arizona back on the clock at pick four. We're going to have them just get the best player, I think, overall pound for pound in next year's draft class. And that is Marvin Harrison Jr., wide receiver from Ohio State. 6'4", 205, 77 catches, almost 1,300 yards, 14 touchdowns last season. Height, weight, speed on the outside. Ridiculous cash radius. Yeah, he's as... He is like, you know, you're, you're comparing him to... You know, the Jamar Chase, Jalen Waddle, Devontae Smith. You go before that, like the big name, bonafide. Like these are ridiculous. Like he's his name might be at the top of that list. He is insane. The hype is real. And for the Cardinals, you know, maybe your DeAndre Hopkins replaces if they trade him. If not, still think you just do this. I think you know, we're gonna talk about this at the next pick as well. Make your quarterback's life easier. And Marvin Harrison is going to do that with the question marks surrounding Kyler Murray. He's going to make his life a little bit easier. At pick five, I have the Colts going Brock Bowers, tight end from Georgia. Make Anthony Richardson's life easier. Shane Steichen comes from the Philadelphia Eagles. We have Dallas Goddard. I think Dallas Goddard as a safety net, as one of the most easy, you know, in my opinion, he's a top five tight end in the league. He has helped out Jalen Hurts in his path to becoming an MVP candidate. Just having that safety net, having that tight end that can take a screen to the house that offers a lot of versatility. Don't really have that on Indianapolis. And if you want to take what worked in Philly with Shane Steichen and Anthony Richardson, get a great tight end. And Brock Bowers is going to be the most hyped tight end since Kyle Pitts. And he's kind of the same. I mean, Kyle Pitts is a different athlete, but stylistically, these guys here are just, you know, they're classified as a tight end, just say receiver. They're going to be... The alpha in the wide receiver. I think Brock Bowers, if they draft him here, he's going to be the number one guy. Number one target guy. And that is, I think, in my opinion, at five, the best move for Indy. Pick six, we have the Commanders. I'm going to have them get a quarterback. Quinn Ewers from Texas. 6'2", 205. I watched two or three Texas games that he played in. Especially, I remember the Alabama game. Like I was like, whoa, there is something here. He won the quarterback battle. This offseason for Texas, which is as deep of a quarterback room as there is in all of college football. 2,100 yards, 15 touchdowns, and six picks last year. I'm just gambling that he's got to have a big year. He's got to have a breakout year for Texas, for the Longhorns, and will establish himself as the third top quarterback in this year's draft class. Commanders need a QB. And just to mention on Brock Bowers, didn't bring up the stats. He almost 1,000 yards and nine touchdowns last year. Just ridiculous production on an offense in Georgia that doesn't really throw the football a whole lot. Atlanta at pick seven. I'm going to have them go on the defense edge type role in JT Tui Malau, the edge rusher from Ohio State. He's six foot four, 270 pounds. So for that 3 4 front, a lot of ways you could probably utilize him, get creative with it. Uh, he had 28 tackles, 10 TFLs, three and a half sacks, two picks, and four PBUs last year. He had one game where I think he had those two interceptions in and like two or th you know two sacks, something like that. It was absurd, absolutely absurd. So this is a little bit of projection. He's got to take his game to another level, but that's a lot of these players are projections. Like they're, they're gonna have to, like there's no, we're, we're out of the spot here. Caleb Williams, Drake May, Marvin Harrison Jr., Brock Bowers. Those are probably the four, maybe a verse that are like, they're gonna go here. Even if they don't have a, a better year this season than what they currently just had, they're probably still gonna be locked to go top five. Now it's a lot of these players are gonna have to take a little bit of a step up to reach this where we have them going. But I'm going to gamble on Tui Malau, who was a former number one overall recruit, five-star out of Ohio State, that you know he's going to solidify himself as a top-ten talent. Green Bay at pick eight. I'm going to go Fashanu at tackle. 
I think you have a guy right here. If you bring him in, he can push Zach Tom for the right tackle spot. And more so, long term for Jordan Love. If he's their answer at quarterback, Bakhtiari is getting up there in age a little bit. You're going to need your successor, and he could be their long term franchise tackle. And until that point, you know, you have Bakhtiari there. Don't need to rush him out the door. Still a great player. Put Fashano at right tackle and build through the trenches. Tennessee at pick number nine. And I'm going to have them go. Edge rusher in Dallas Turner from Alabama. 6'4", 245 pounds. Eight TFLs, four sacks last year. But two years ago, him and Will Anderson were absolutely unstoppable. As a true freshman, 10 tackles for a loss, eight and a half sacks. You know, you're laughing if you're Tennessee. Put him on one side, Harold Landry on the other. And that is, you know, there's, there's you're, you're reshaping your defense, retooling your defense a little bit. Tennessee runs the football and plays good defense. Help keep that the blueprint. Now we have the Chicago Bears up first. Now they could go probably not tackle again. You know, I think they're probably good with Braxton Jones. So we're going to go here, pick 10, and we're going to get them a wide receiver from Ohio State, Imika Igbuka. Six foot one, 205 pounds, 74 catches, 1,100 yards, 10 touchdowns last season at Ohio State. I think it's, uh, you know, Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave type situation where the top two, the top wide receivers are both at the same school. Uh, Ibuka, a little bit better athlete, I think, than Marvin Harrison. They had him return some punts and stuff like that. But I think if you are the Chicago Bears, this is just reaffirming, you know, Justin Fields is our guy. Let's make sure we give him the maximum amount of weapons possible to get him there to where he needs to be, to reach his ceiling. I think double dipping at wide receiver, you pair that with DJ Moore. You hope that like some form of Darnell Mooney or maybe Chase Claypool starts to plan out. You got Cole Komet there at tight end. You prioritize the offensive line by getting Darnell right. Let's just keep going. Let's keep going on the offense. And you pick again at 12 where you can go on the defense. Pick 11 for the Vegas Raiders. Well, we had Fashanu right now who's projected the top tackle. We had him go to the Green Bay Packers. So we're going to grab the second best tackle right now. That's Joe Alt from Notre Dame. 6'7", 315. He's the number one overall returning tackle. According to PFF, he had a 91 run grade in comparison to Fashanu, who's top five. But Fashano is a little bit more of a pass protector, which is more valuable in today's NFL. But Joe Alt is legit. He's been playing at a ridiculously high level since he, I think, like a freshman or sophomore for Notre Dame. And uh, yeah, you're the Raiders. Put him at right tackle. Him and Colton Miller build through the trenches. Now, you know, there's no real quarterback I think I would go. I think they're, I think the Raiders like Jimmy Garoppolo more than a lot of people, especially when you're mocking. You're like, oh, come on, they're going to move off from him. I think they like Jimmy Garoppolo for the next little bit. So keep him upright, keep him healthy. Chicago at pick 12, back on the clock again. I'm going to have to go edge rusher and get Braylon Trice from Washington. 6'4", 260, 12 TFLs, 9 sacks. Just an incending Pac-12 pass rusher. Uh, has some nice speed to power. Got some decent bend. And I think he's going to up those numbers. I think he'll be a double-digit sack player again. You know, between, you know, he's 9. So I think he'll get to it this year for Washington. And it's going to be interesting, man, because Washington is ZTF here. Had the injury. He was projected easy first round pick, but it seems like Trice has kind of taken over as the alpha in that pass rush. So that I, I would also love ZTF though to pop off uh, because my Philadelphia Eagles likely are going to be picking at the end of the draft and we're going to be looking for some edge rushers. But we have Trice here going to the Bears. I just look at the Bears defense right now. Who is going to be their premier pass rusher? Do they have one? If not, could do a lot worse than Trice in terms of prospects. Denver on the clock up next, and we're going to get a partner for PSQ. One side, Pat Sertain from Bama. The other side, we'll go Cool Aid McKinstry. Best name. In this year's draft class, I think. Uh, six foot one, two, almost 200 pounds, 195 pounds, 35 tackles, two at two TFLs, had an interception, 15 PBUs, is number one returning corner, uh, according to PFF. You know, height, weight, speed on the outside. And I think him and Patrick Sertain, the second, is just a ridiculous long term secondary for the Denver Broncos. I think a lot of Denver Broncos fans were like, maybe we could even go corner early this year. But we'll get one here in 2024 with McKinstry at 13. Patriots on the clock at 14. And this is a layup. They love their Alabama players. They're going to go J.C. Latham, 6'6", 325. The number three returning tackle in all of college football. 84.5 pass blocking grade. Left or right tackle. Pick your shot. They didn't really get the, the high tier tackle. I don't think they want it in this year's draft class. So there you go. Either way, he play one of the spots. We have the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. Up at pick 15, and we're going to have them go. This is our first little bit of a surprise. I'm going to go Leonard Taylor, 42nd rated player, but I, I think he's going to sneak in the first round, man. Six foot three, 305 pounds, 10 and a half TFLs, three sacks last season. You know, he's an ascending interior pass rusher, and I think that front three for the Pittsburgh Steelers got to get a little bit younger. Get your Cam Hayward replacement. I think that will be Leonard Taylor, the third potentially 
out of the Miami Hurricanes. Arizona, back on the clock. I think this is from the Rams, Trey. I don't know how they have two first-round picks. They don't have three. Um, well, we're here. This is this is how it works. And I'm going to have them get Latu, Latu, Ed Drusher, UCLA. Why not double up? 6'4", 265, 12 and a half TFLs, 10 and a half sacks, three forced fumbles last year for the Bruins. You have Latu as one of your pass rushers. You go with Jared Verse on the other spot. You got like this. That's how you win the draft. I mean, Arizona uh, just felt like we're almost phoning in the 2023 draft to acquire as many picks as possible for 2024. And when you have a shot to just completely overhaul and revamp your pass rush, I kind of think you need to. And it's you know we're gonna see this probably for a couple other picks to round out the first round. When you're doing a way too early mock draft, guys that are right now like on the bubble of first round, first round edge rusher is a pretty safe pick. Versus going like multiple first round linebackers, which are like middle linebackers, which I've seen from some other way too early mocks, like three linebackers going the first round. Like that's not going to happen. Maybe we'll give you one, not three. Pass rushers though, ascending pass rushers, kind of safe picks to throw into the first round. Houston at pick 17. I'm going to have them get a weapon for CJ Stroud. And that's going to be Xavier Worthy, the wide receiver out of Texas. Built kind of like Devontae Smith. Six foot one, 165 pounds. Last season, 760 yards, nine touchdowns. But much like I had Quinn Ewers ascending, I think, you know, obviously Worley's going to be his go-to target there. They have a really nice tight end, which we'll talk about in a second. But I think uh, Worley is going to definitely improve his draft stock and very much will be in the conversation for one of the top wide receivers in this year's draft class. And Houston gets a big-time weapon. The Chargers at pick number 18. I'm going to go Michael Hall Jr., defensive end from Ohio State, six foot three, 290 pounds, 7.5 TFLs, 4.5 sacks, He's a player that's going to have to put his best football forward here this season to really justify being a first-round pick. But, you know, the trajectory is going this way. It, it seems like a lot of a lot of early mocks have him going there, and a lot of Ohio State fans think he's going to break out a much the same with uh, Tui Malu. Let's see it, man. And you look at the Chargers. I think that front three could get a lot younger. You can look for more of a, of a pass rush that doesn't have to rely on the two outside, you know, Bosa and Khalil Mack. And you might get that in Michael Hall Jr. New Orleans at pick number 19. I'm going to have them go with Chop Robinson. Pass rusher out of Penn State. 6'3", 250. Maryland transfer last season. First year at Ohio State, or Penn State, sorry. 26 tackles, 10 TFLs, 5.5 sacks. I just think it's time to kind of double in. You got Foskey. All right, there's your, there's one guy. You got, uh, who they got? Peyton Turner. Kind of going on there. And Cam George's not getting any younger. So I just feel like it's never a bad thing to stock up on pass rushers. And it would be awesome to see a guy named Chop Robinson play for the New Orleans Saints at pick 19. Giants at pick 20. I'm going to have them surprise here a little bit. I think it's a pretty strong safety class. I'm going to go Kalen Bullock at safety. I think he can carve out a really, really nice role with Xavier McKinney in that secondary. Uh, he is six foot three, 185 pounds, 48 tackles, five picks, five PBUs. Um, what was actually a pretty terrible USC defense last year. But I think he's going to test really well. I think it's going to be a strong safety class. I think we might see as many as three safeties, similar to 2022, where we had a couple safeties go in the first round. Uh, I think these guys are going to test well. It's not going to be like a Brian Branch situation where the tape's first round. But athletically speaking, you feel a little worrisome about using a first round pick. I think we're going to see some really athletic safeties go sooner than later. And the Giants definitely need some safety help. Pick 21 with the Detroit Lions. And I'm going to get them a project at edge rush right now. That's Jack Sawyer. Another big-time recruit from Ohio State and ascending player that's going to have to justify this selection. But the ceiling is there. 6'4", 265, 6.5 TFLs, 4.5 sacks last season for Ohio State. And many people assume him, Michael Hall, and Tui Malo are going to, both all those guys are going to pop off and definitely put themselves in the conversation for the first round. And I do think the, Green Bay, uh, the Detroit Lions are going to want to improve their pass rush. 22, we have the Miami Dolphins, and I am going to have them get a tight end. Jatavion Sanders from Texas, six foot four, 245 pounds, at 600 yards and five touchdowns last year. He's no Brock Bowers. No one's really a Brock Bowers, but almost in any other year, he'd probably be the top tight end in the draft class. And much like a Saber Worthy, much like Quinn Ewers, we're kind of gambling here that a lot of these Texas players, especially the go-to guys for that offense, are going to be ascending talents. They're not going to be able to run the football as much with no more Bijan Robinson and Roshan Johnson. So I think that passing offense is going to fully flex all their muscles and the top to go to guys are going to only benefit from that. And that'll be Sanders sneaking into the first round. Charger, uh, we got the KX okay, Dolphins. We now have the Jacksonville Jaguars at pick 23. And I'm gonna have them get Kalen King, corner from Penn State. 5'11", 190, had uh, three interceptions, 16 PBUs. His number two returning corner 
According to Pro Football Focus, Jacksonville seems like they're not. I mean, they do got Tyson Campbell, but they're they're not. You know, height prejudice for their corners. If you know, they they, they can see a guy that's five eleven and be like, yeah, that guy can play on the outside in our scheme. And I think they definitely need to improve their secondary a little bit. It was maybe one of the areas I was surprised they weren't more aggressive at in the 2023 draft. So getting someone like Kalen King, legitimate first round talent at corner, is nice value at pick 23. Jets at pick 24. I'm going to have them select Cam. Ooh, we got to go off here a little bit. Cam Kitchen from Miami. The U. 5'11", 205. 59 tackles, 6 interceptions, 6 PBUs. I think he's going to test pretty well. 4-star. Uh, I believe he's a 4-star athlete when he got recruited to Miami. So I think he's going to test a lot, you know, as a production. And, uh, you know, see, this is one of the weird ones, though. Like, where it's just like, ah, how many safeties are really going to go in the first round? It's a position that's not overly valued right now. But I think with the Jets potentially set to lose both of their starting safeties, Chuck Clark and Whitehead, it will put a priority, especially if Kitchen can build off of six interceptions. He had a 90 PFF grade overall last year, so he's one of the best players in all of college football. And if he shows that consistency again here this year, definitely could see him going to the first round, especially to a team that's going to be needing a safety, and he might even just end up be BPA for Joe Douglas and the Jets. Seattle at pick 25. I'm going to have them select... A linebacker, Jeremiah Trotter Jr. from Clemson, the son of the great Philadelphia Eagle, Jeremiah Trotter. 6'1", 230, 89 tackles, 13.5 TFLs, 6.5 sacks, 2 interceptions, 5 PBUs, number one returning linebacker according to Pro Football Focus. Only player on the defensive side of the ball that had an 80-plus grade in coverage and as a pass rusher last season. And I think he's also going to be an athlete to boot. On tape, you know, it's, linebackers are a tough one. But I, I think you're going to be talking about a guy that's going to be like a 9-7 Braz, something ridiculous like that. And you look at the Seattle Seahawks, didn't pick up the fifth-year option on their former first-round linebacker. You just brought back Bobby Wagner on a one-year deal. I think much like the Jets, that linebacking room could be lacking a little bit. And much like we saw with Jack Campbell, there could be one first-round linebacker, I think, in this year's draft. And if that's going to be the case, I would look at Seattle with Trotter Jr. Baltimore at pick 26. It's a little bit of a fun pick here. Even though he's a little bit of safety, which is suspect because he's a corner, but... He's a white guy. Cooper DeJean from Iowa. I have him as a corner. 6'1", 205. 75 tackles, 3 TFLs, 5 interceptions, 8 PBUs. He's the number 3 returning corner that's draftable for pro football focus in this year's upcoming draft class. He's a baller. You know, I watched a lot of Iowa highlights because I didn't want to punish myself by watching them play on the offense. But a lot of defensive cutups. And like Riley Moss went kind of early. What was he, like an early third round pick? And, like, DeGene was a guy that stood out. This was a guy that had a little bit more intangibles. I think he's going to test probably similar. I don't, you know, Riley Moss tested very well. I, I think you're going to get a similar style player in Gene. I think he maybe just a little bit more technically refined, a little bit more fluid. And that is someone I would love to see. Like, Baltimore, like an eyebrow-raising type pick. I think the Ravens would be a franchise that would be all over something like this. And he is very much a corner, not a safety. He's a corner, goddammit. Dallas at pick 27. I'm going to have the Dallas Cowboys here. Go on the offensive line. And they're going to get Cooper BB, who's going to be most likely slide in to a guard. Very similar to the Tyler Smith selection. But the reason why I made this is that there was like this thing that leaked, video that leaked. And it looked like they were trying to debate between an offensive lineman and Mozzie Smith in the first round. So I'm going to take that knowledge and apply. Like, all right, we're going to assume Tyler Smith come this year's draft is going to be take over for Tyron Smith at left tackle. And then you need someone that can come in at guard that also gives you a little bit of tackle flexibility. Honestly, you could even view him as a tackle if Terrence Steele doesn't get a contract extension. So we're going to have the Dallas Cowboys do what Dallas does. And that is go on the offensive line there at pick 27. Buffalo pick 28. I'm going to have them go Raheem Rocket Sanders out of Arkansas. Big time home run type player. Here's his stats. We got 1,400 yards, 10 touchdowns to go along with almost 30 catches, 300 yards, and two touchdowns. So it's like, oh, okay, this guy here is kind of like a modern running back. What if I told you he can pass block really well? You know why he can pass block? He's six foot two, almost 240 pounds. No idea how he's going to test. This is going to be like a very interesting. He runs like a 4 6. He's not going the first round. But passes the eye test, passes with the spades. I'm in. I, I mean, I kind of thought Will Shipley would be regarded as the best running back in this class. Yeah, I think Quorum here, maybe not athletically speaking enough to go in the first round. Allen's kind of similar. Both those guys are built very similar. They're both like 230. Um, and you got Henderson, who needs a little bit of a bounce back here for Ohio State. But I am all about Rocket Sanders potentially in the first round. Put that with James Cook in a backfield for Buffalo. Again, if they're picking here, they just didn't have enough to go win a Super Bowl. Get more offense. You could never have enough offense, especially in the AFC. The 49ers on the clock at pick 29, and I'm going to have them go offensive tackle and get them to grab Graham Barton. This is a little bit of a PFF assist of a pick. 
Graham Barton, 6'5", 315. He's the number two rated tackle returning in college football. He's the only tackle last year that had an 85 run and 85 pass plus grade. So he's very well-rounded, built like a tackle. And if you built and look like a duck, probably, you know, you know that saying, right? I just butchered it. Looks like a duck, talks like a duck. Probably a duck. Look like an offensive tackle. That's going to be a first-round pick. Play like an offensive tackle. That's going to be a first-round pick. You're probably going to be a first-round pick. And the 49ers can get younger at tackle. Might even have someone that can play right away at right tackle here. Bengals up on at pick 30. And we're going to go a little bit of a, of a surprise pick here. This is I have no idea how he's going to test. But I'm going to put Johnny Wilson here. We're assuming there's going to be some movement at the wide receiver spot. I just I don't think they're going to be able to go into the 2024 season with Boyd, Higgins, Jamar Chase. So, Johnny Wilson, 6'7", 235 pounds. Had 900 yards, 5 touchdowns. Just has undeniable traits. And I, I think he's wide receiver. You usually see a build like that. You're like, oh, that guy's going to you know move to tight or something. Like he's going to be a wide receiver you know at, absurd in the red zone insane catch radius and like for what it's worth i was just like all right what's his 40 time and like looking at some of it, like his high school like he might be like running like low four fives so like this is just a really really unique player and i kind of look just more so at that bengals wide receiver room like there's, they're gonna need a replacement here or there and why not take a gamble on a guy that's just unique incredibly unique to the position philadelphia pick 31 here's a reach for me i was like all right well we need brandon graham's replacement and ZTF, I hope he bounced back. He had some injury stuff, uh, you know, but two years ago, looked like a top 10 pick. I think Josiah Stewart making the, the big move from Coastal Carolina to Michigan. He could potentially go in this range, but I'm going to go a little bit. Howard Roseman's a Florida guy. Made a lot of jokes about, you know, I got I to gotta lose my Gator license because I'm drafting all these. You know, there's no Georgia players that really make a lot of sense right here. So we're going to go with a Gator edge rusher. Prince Lee... Uman Melon. Princey Uma Melon. I think that's, you know, I don't think I butchered that too, too bad. He's on my own freaking Gators team. But he's 6'4", 260. Over the last two seasons for Florida, an 88 pass rush grade. Not a lot of proven production. Like this guy that's like, you know, four or five sacks. I think he's an ascending edge rusher, and he's going to be a traits guy. I think he's going to test very well. He's going to be a very twitchy edge rusher. Pretty good bend. Speed to power. A lot of the tropes that you talk about. So that, that's a guy that I'd be keeping an eye on for a sleeper. Because right now for Philadelphia, going down this way, I think that that's the spot they want. They're going to focus in on an edge rusher. And if you told me right now, C4, way too early, I'm going to be a little bit Gator biased. And we're going to gamble on the the Gator SEC pass rush. Because that's how he roasts me just straight up just only going to draft SEC players from now on. And I don't think that's a bad, faulty strategy whatsoever. And then finishing out our way too early mock draft, I have the Kansas City Chiefs. And we're going to go with Tyleek Williams, defensive lineman, from Ohio State, 6'3", 330. And as a, in two years at Ohio State as a rotational D-tackle, he has nine TFL, six sacks. So he's a built like a nose tackle, offers some pass rush upside. And I feel like that's just kind of what the Chiefs do at the tail end of the first round, build through the defense, get some more weapons for Steve Spagnuolo, and Williams would be able to do that right away. So there you go, fellas. That is a way too early 2024 NFL mock draft. And how about that? The biggest reach is me and my Eagles. So I, I don't think too many people are going to be upset about it. We'd love to hear what you guys think in the comment section below. But that'll do it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. we we'll be back here tomorrow with a new rebuild featuring some of the big-time moves from the 2023 NFL Draft. Uh, if you did the first time, stop by. Don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. Smash the like button if you enjoyed. Until next time, it's your boy C4. Saying peace out. Love you. Have a good one.